for New Zealand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honourable Marianne Street. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, telecommunications um, and this uh, this bill, and, I'm, and I understand that we're on part two, and that's what I'm going to address, um, is not particularly my forte. And so I, I want to, but I want to talk about international obligations of telecommunications framework, regulatory frameworks, which I do know something about. At least I understand the international obligations. And I'd like to talk about those uh, with reference to, uh, to two things in particular, but I'll come to that in due course. When I look at this legislation, uh, Mr Chair, and I, and I acknowledge that I'm not on the select committee that dealt with this legislation, and so I come to it perhaps with the advantage of fresh eyes. But the bill itself, as in front of us now, is clearly a dog's breakfast. Uh, most of it has been struck out and replaced by other things in the course of the select committee process. There's more striking out and more underlining, um, indicating new insertions in this bill than one can shake a stick at. And I am not persuaded that even with all of these amendments that have come through the select committee process, that we have got this bill the best it can be. And I want to pick up comments of my colleague, the Honourable David Cunliffe, a moment ago, with respect to the regulatory forbearance period, which was struck out, and rightly so, rightly struck out after considerable effort uh, on the part of Labour members on that uh, select committee because uh, they fought alongside industry representatives to ensure that this forbearance period, this regulatory holiday, uh, was removed from the legislation. But I'm not persuaded, Mr Chair, that what we've got is a vast improvement. The two areas that I want to uh, address in particular are New Zealand's international obligations under GATS, which of course is the General, General Agreement on Trade and Services, and under our free trade agreement with Australia and ASEAN, known as the ANSFTA Agreement, the Australia ASEAN New Zealand Free Trade Agreement, because there are international obligations that exist for um, a, a regulatory framework to apply in the, uh, the rolling out of ultra-fast uh, broadband. And this may come as a surprise, and perhaps it came as a surprise to the Minister, which is why, uh, with Labor, under Labor's pressure, he realised that the forbearance period uh, was not tolerable and not sustainable. But what I, what I want to come to is the fact that some advice that is available to the Minister and to members of the select committee and to officials has been set aside. APEC, uh, Mr. S Mr Chairman, has developed a document called Best Practices for Implementing the WTO, World Trade Organization, Telecom's Reference Paper. And this, uh, as it describes, sets out best practice. It, it uh, essentially reflects the GATS telecommunications commitments. It is not binding at international law, and I readily concede that it is not binding, but it is a document about best practice. Now, a number of questions that the Select Committee had were referred to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, particularly to uh, their section which uh, considers um, uh, the Trade Law Unit, which uh, is part of the legal division of MFAT, which does the close analysis of uh, legislation to ensure that New Zealand meets its international obligations. My question to the Minister is that given the dog's breakfast of a process surrounding this legislation, can he guarantee to this House, 
and to consumers of telecommunications services. Mr Chair. Um, I'll call a member, uh, but I must ask you to come back to, to the part, part two. Thank Quite you. Can I ask you to come back to part two? Certainly. Thank you, um, Mr Chair. I, I'm of the view that I am discussing things that come out of the insertion of the new part 4AA in part two. And it's, those, it's that part um, which does trigger these concerns about international obligations because it goes to the, the uh, obligation and the, the rights and the responsibilities of the Commerce Commission to be the independent regulatory body which our WTO, obliga WTO obligations requires, that there should be a, uh, an independent regulatory uh, body. Mm, no, I, I might have to correct that, Mr Chairman. They may not require it, but, but certainly recommend it. And so my, I go back to my question, which is, can the Minister guarantee that New Zealand is implementing bre best practice in this regard? If the Commerce Commission, in this part of the bill, ca has, uh, there are parts which it can, uh, um, that it has regulatory oversight over uh, um, after a period of eight and a half years, then is this in fact best practice? Why has the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in its advice, said that to the committee, as the APEC document on best practice only concerns consistency with New Zealand's international obligations, it is not considered further here. I'm not sure, uh, Mr Chairman, that the Minister is able to reassure the House that this piece of legislation complies not only with the detail of our obligations, both under GATS and under ANSFITA, but also represents best practice for the regulatory framework surrounding the, uh, the rollout of, uh, of ultra-fast broadband services to New Zealand consumers. And I would like the Minister to take a call and respond to those concerns because it is not plain from part two of this legislation that either our obligations are being met or that even better than that, because we do like to pride ourselves at being at the forefront of, of uh, recognition and implementation of international obligations, that we are doing the best we possibly can. This, the regulatory holiday was struck out in a, um, uh, in a secretive and cloaked manner, uh, and I am not, uh, not persuaded that the process around that was the best it could be. And I consider that there are too many either unanswered or inadequately answered questions still surrounding this piece of legislation, particularly as it relates to those areas uh, with which I am familiar, which are WTO and uh, free trade agreement obligations. So, Mr Chair, uh, finally, I'd like to speak in support of uh, my colleague Claire Curran's amendment to Clause 24 in Part 2, uh, which is to insert uh, a new paragraph uh, which has the effect of ensuring um, that the, the Crown alone bears the costs of any significant changes made to pricing. And here we come back to the potential for the Commerce Commission to have adequate oversight and operate as an independent regulatory body for the best possible delivery of what are becoming increasingly essential services for all New Zealand consumers. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Chairman, I'd like to come back 